Good evening, Mavericks. Thank you to all of our students and families for joining us here tonight to discuss UTA's campus and health safety. My name is Lisa Nagy and I'm the Vice President for Student Affairs. Our campus sure seems quiet um, this summer, but I will assure you that it's been one of the busiest in our history as we have been preparing to welcome you to come back to campus. I am pleased to have many of my colleagues joining me here this evening who have helped plan and prepare to ensure our campus is ready for your return. While we are excited to have students return, you will not be returning to a new normal. We are taking every possible measure to ensure your UTA experience is safe and healthy as we work amidst this global pandemic. We are both prepared and looking forward to a fall semester. Tonight is the second of the student and family listening series designed to elaborate on our plans and utilize pre-submitted questions as well as insight we have received from student leaders and representatives across UTA. We have a moderated Q&A and after our initial presentations and my colleagues and I will answer as many questions as we can. Our focus on our questions tonight will be on the campus health and safety topic, but additional questions uh, will be used as we will add more things to our FAQs as well as future sessions and communications. All of our sessions are recorded and posted on our website at uta.edu slash coronavirus. Thursday, we will discuss campus and student life, and I hope many of you will be able to join us there again. Next session. Thank you. As part of our preparation, we developed a plan utilizing a few guiding principles. First, we've prioritized the health and safety of our students and our faculty as well as our staff. We are taking the lead on an environment that changes daily and as we are in this influx of the pandemic. If the environment changes suddenly, the campus community will be ready to be adaptable and flexible. We have utilized a phased approach and to transition to campus and to help operate seamlessly and successfully. And we have maintained alignment with the state of Texas, the governor's orders, the CDC, Texas Higher Education Coordinating Board, and our UT system. So tonight to kick things off, I would like um, for you to watch a quick video that will show you a few related things to our return to campus. When the Maverick community returns to campus this fall, our normal is by necessity going to be different than what we're used to. But one thing that will endure no matter what UTA is a community that cares, and we will continue looking out for health, safety, and well-being of our fellow Mavericks. Anyone on campus must wear a face mask or covering while in campus buildings and anywhere on campus where social distancing measures are difficult to maintain. If an individual on campus is not wearing a face covering, please do not contact the UTA Police Department as they are not responsible for enforcing the face covering policy. Respectfully inform the individual of UTA's policy. If the individual refuses to wear a mask or covering, they may be asked to leave the area. If an ongoing violation of the policy persists, faculty and staff should contact their immediate supervisor. Students should be referred to the Office of Community Standards. Masks are not required in private offices, while alone in labs, or in residence hall rooms or apartments. While in dining services areas, such as Connection Cafe, masks must be worn until you're ready to begin eating. Face masks and coverings should cover your nose and mouth and fit snugly around your face. Cloth coverings should be washed daily. Face masks and coverings do not eliminate the need for social distancing. So remember, stay at least six feet from other people. Be respectful of others in shared and closed spaces by limiting entry when the space is full. Elevator occupancy will be limited. Please follow instructional signs accordingly and take the stairs whenever possible. Wash your hands often with soap and water for at least 20 seconds, especially after coughing or sneezing or if you've touched a shared surface with exposed hands. If soap and water aren't readily available, use hand sanitizer that contains at least 60% alcohol. Avoid touching your face at all times. Monitor yourself for symptoms of coronavirus each day before coming to campus. If you exhibit any of these symptoms, 
self-isolate and do not come to campus. If you have symptoms, consult your healthcare provider for testing consideration. Students, you can call health services to make an appointment. Employees, you should contact your primary care provider. If you test positive for COVID-19, self-isolate. Anyone who has been exposed to someone who has recently tested positive for COVID-19 should also self-quarantine. Please report using the personal diagnosis or close contact form, which can be found on our website at uta.edu slash coronavirus. UTA is working diligently to keep our campus safe for our community, including thorough, frequent cleaning and disinfecting measures. Disinfecting supplies will also be made available for general use. So please take care and wipe down those shared surfaces after you use them. Remember, we are all in this together. Through socially responsible conduct, we will keep our community healthy and strong. As I described, tonight's session will, will focus on some of the questions we received and how prepared we are for a focused and safe return to campus. We have been thoughtfully reimagining campus through enhanced protection, a shared responsibility and collaboration across the units. I would like to welcome our first speaker, John Hall, Vice President of Campus Operations, who has been integral in the planning and execution of our campus safety plans and to share an overview of where we are today. John. Well, thank you, Lisa, and uh, certainly good to be with everyone this evening. Uh, if we could go to the next slide. Um, here are just some examples of preparations uh, that are ongoing uh, to provide a safe environment for when you return to the campus. Uh, you'll notice a lot of increased and extensive cleaning on a continual basis, uh, modifying layouts of rooms and spaces to promote social distancing. Uh, we're also modifying all of our uh, ventilation systems in our buildings to introduce as much outside air as each system is capable of handling to provide a safer environment inside our, our buildings. You'll see a lot of plexiglass installations throughout, as well as extensive signage uh, that's being installed as we speak throughout all of our campus buildings. So next slide, please. And here's uh, examples of some of the signage uh, that you'll see when you return to the campus. And again, it's all really to reinforce the safety and health protocols that we must all adhere to to ensure a safe environment uh, uh, for, our, for our campus this fall. Uh, next slide, please. So for students uh, living on campus, uh, obviously we must be flexible and responsive uh, as this is a changing and, and certainly challenging situation. Hopefully you are aware of the process in place for scheduling your move in. Uh, if you have any questions about that, I'm sure that there's more information available on the housing website. Uh, there will be cleaning supplies provided as mentioned in the uh, in the video. Uh, if there's a need to retrench, uh, uh, to pull back any of our campus operations. I mean, this could be done at a unit level or it could be done more broadly at the university level like we saw uh, back in, in March, back in the spring. So it's a situation that we will continually monitor. And again, the health and wellness of our campus is, is of utmost importance. Um, there are options available for quarantine and isolation. Uh, in some cases, a student may be able to quarantine or isolate in his or her apartment. Uh, there may be cases where we encourage a student uh, to move back home temporarily, uh, but we will also have uh, both quarantine and isolation facilities available for our students here on the campus as well. And certainly because, uh, and particularly in our residence halls, uh, we have a lot of shared spaces. Uh, we want to emphasize that this is a shared responsibility of all of us to adhere to all the strict uh, health and safety protocols that are in place, strictly adhere to those uh, so that we do have a very safe environment uh, for all of us uh, on campus. Next slide, please. So for services and events, uh, we're uh, certainly encouraging uh, to engage virtually. Uh, 
at least at the beginning of the fall semester, but we are developing guidelines uh, which will assist event planners. Uh, we certainly want to be supportive of events uh, as long as they adhere to orders from the governor's office, as Lisa mentioned earlier, CDC guidelines, and they're certainly planned and carried out in a smart way. Uh, other services that have been enhanced since you've left campus back in the spring is, is enhanced Wi-Fi services across the campus, both inside the buildings and outside uh, our campus buildings, uh, certainly making uh, spaces available uh, for living and learning to further support uh, student success and continue to uh, provide more really student engagement spaces uh, so that we all have a stronger sense of belonging uh, here at UT Arlington. And as noted earlier, various uh, safety modifications uh, to ensure campus offices are positioned to continually serve our students at UTA in a safe way. So next slide, please. Thanks, John. Next, we will discuss the specifics of staying safe and healthy. But first, I want to share the importance of everyone doing their part for our community in the larger Arlington and Dallas Fort Worth area. Our campus, um, we have been asking our faculty to oversee guidelines in our classrooms, staff to assist with a lot of the non academic areas. And many of you should have received my message along with Dr. Middleton to request that students follow guidelines and model safety practices as you prepare to return to campus soon. To elaborate further on some of the guidelines, we are joined this evening by the Director of Emergency Management, Mrs. Qua Harry Harris. Thank you, Lisa. President Lim stated, we cannot guarantee what shape COVID-19 will take on our community, but we can each do our part to keep ourselves and one another safe and healthy. During my time with you today, I will discuss some of those activities we can do to help keep ourselves and our campus safe. We will discuss personal safety first, what you can do to protect yourself. Please move to the next slide. On a daily basis, make sure you monitor your symptoms. If you experience symptoms such as fever, shortness of breath, difficulty breathing, chills, or any number of symptoms associated with the COVID-19, you should stay home. While on campus or anywhere in the community, you should wear a face mask or a cloth face covering. If you do not have one handy, you can stop by the library or university center and pick one up. Make sure as much as possible you practice social distancing, staying at least six feet away from others. Instead of handshakes, give a MAV up to greet each other, which will allow you to say hello while still maintaining social distance. Wash your hands frequently to kill germs. And when necessary, wear gloves, goggles, or face shields. Lastly, disinfect frequently touched personal objects such as cell phones, remote controls, and doorknobs. Next slide. While doing things to protect yourself, you will also be doing the same activities necessary to help prevent the spread of virus on our campus. A number of preventative measures discussed in the previous slide will also protect others while on campus. Simple steps like wearing a mask or cloth face covering, frequently washing your hands, cleaning your surroundings, disinfecting those objects frequently touched, practicing social distancing, staying home when you are sick, and using a tissue or your elbow to cover your sneeze or cough can help protect you and prevent the spread of the virus on campus. Now we understand there is a lot of information to consume to prepare for the fall semester. To help get our campus community ready, we have created a repopulation plan that explains what you should expect when you arrive on campus. In addition to the plan, we will provide return to campus training. Next slide. have already started by creating the video you watched early in the presentation. We have also created training for faculty and staff, and we're working on training specifically for our students. 
All training and education will address compliance, providing reminders to adhere to the on-campus safety and health procedures in place, as well as options to report those who are non-compliant. Lastly, um, we will make sure that we provide or include in our training that we provide the level of involvement of the Office of Community Standards. And because we understand that safety is everyone's responsibility, all of our training will provide information on how the entire campus will be held to the same safety standards. Thank you for allowing me to present to you today, Lisa. Thanks, Kual Harry. I would like to transition our discussion to keeping our Mavericks both mentally and physically healthy. As you know, we have a robust health services clinic for our students, but recently their capabilities for testing have been strengthened through the North Texas Genome Center right here at UTA. Our campus is proud of the rapid response to gear up for campus COVID testing this fall. I would like to introduce Dr. Angela Middleton, who has been instrumental in leading our strategy for our students as the Director of Health Services. Thanks, Lisa. Um, as Lisa said, um, we have been <clears throat> becoming very busy responding to COVID-19 concerns. Before I get started on testing, I wanted to speak in general about um, health services and the services it can provide for our students. If you may not know, health services is located in the heart of campus between the University Center and the College of Business Building. We are a full service um, primary care clinic offering not only primary care services, but women's health and psychiatry as well. We have a full service lab, pharmacy and x-ray on site. We also have a nursing department that can provide immunization services as well as a robust health promotions department. Students that are currently registered can access many of these services for free. Um, as we all know, many students will have concerns about getting tested for COVID-19 this fall. Health Services has been providing uh, testing for COVID-19 since the spring and we will continue to do so. Students that have this concern can contact us um, to set up a telehealth appointment with a primary care provider to determine if they do indeed need testing. If that determination has been made, a um, subsequent appointment, usually the same day, will be made for the student to come in and be swabbed for the test. There will be no out-of-pocket charges for the COVID-19 tests provided by Health Services. Um, like with all health um, information, the results of COVID-19 test will be handled with confidential um, confidentiality, privacy, and respect. As Kwaheri mentioned, ill students, staff, and faculty should stay home until they have met um, criteria to return to campus. Next slide. So I'd like to speak a little bit about contact tracing and how that involves um, the things on this slide. As many of you know, contact tracing is an essential component to mitigating um, any infectious disease and especially with COVID-19. You may ask what exactly is contact tracing? Contact tracing is the act of identifying people who have tested positive for the virus um, and putting them in isolation as well as interviewing them to determine when they became infectious and identifying who they may have been in close contact with. Close contact for COVID-19 involves um, several different definitions. The one you probably hear the most is being within six feet of somebody for 10 minutes or longer, but it also can involve being in direct contact with somebody. So if you hug, kiss, or have a handshake with somebody, or if you share food, eating, or drinking utensils, or if you are directly coughed or sneezed upon, all those would define a close contact. So when we do, um, close identify people that have been in close contact with somebody, um, we will contact them and have them go into quarantine. Um, quarantine, as you can see there, is, def is um, staying at home for 14 days from the date of last known exposure. The person that has been placed in quarantine should monitor themselves for symptoms and seek with their, speak with their healthcare provider to consider getting testing if symptoms develop. 
students can speak with health services for this type of testing. People that have been um, identified as having the virus are placed in isolation. Not a whole lot different from quarantine, um, just a different term. But again, you are asked to stay home um, and stay away from others in your household. You will also monitor your symptoms. Um, one can generally clear isolation when they've met CDC standards, which currently are 10 days have passed since the start of symptoms. You've had 24 hours of not having a fever without taking fever reducing medicines, as well as you're generally feeling better. To return to the UTA campus, you will also need a healthcare provider's letter of clearance stating that you are good to return. Students can receive this letter from health services. Uh, currently, UTA has developed, sorry, a robust <coughs> contact tracing team that will, um, that has been up and running since the spring and will continue into the fall. If um, somebody has tested outside of health services and tested positive, they can fill out the close contact or personal diagnosis form, which is located on the COVID-19 website, um, accessible through the UTA website. This will help us identify um, not only students that have tested positive through health services, but people that have tested through the community as well. Next slide. Um, this here is a list of resources available to our students. I did want to speak just a little bit about the mental health resources. Um, we have on campus a robust uh, CAPS. CAPS stands for Counseling and Psychological Services. Students that may need um, assistance with mental health can reach out to CAPS. They can receive up to six visits for free each semester and after that pay just a uh, $10 fee for subsequent visits. We also have a 24 hour crisis line called Mavs Talk. It is answered 24 hours a day, seven days a week and um, provides access to a mental health professional. We also have two online um, uh, resources, therapy assisted online called TAO, which is an online interactive resource for students that can do some self monitoring and interactive tools to um, help with self coping as well as the Thrive app, which is for all UT system students to download and help learn about healthy resources. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Middleton. Thank you, Dr. Middleton. Um, as we're going to move now into our Q&A portion of uh, tonight's session, I just like a quick reminder um, and a plug for the training that uh, Qua Harry mentioned will be inside each student's Canvas account. Information will be rolling out to all of our students about that and it'll be required training as students come back to campus. Also, just a reminder that there's a couple of ways that you can stay updated both on our website, but also at the hashtag MavsBack2020. For those of you that submitted uh, questions early on, um, we will gonna kind of start reading through those. If you are not aware, in the top right section of your screen, there's a question mark symbol um, that can be used to submit um, questions to our team. My colleague, Dr. Paul Kittle, will group and read questions um, as we're theming these. And again, we're gonna be prioritizing based upon uh, campus health and safety. So, and I'll be asking some of our um, our colleagues that are based upon their expertise to answer those questions for us. So, Paul. Yes, Lisa, our first question is related to COVID testing prior to arriving on campus. And our student asks, is a student required to submit a negative COVID test before returning to campus? Uh, Dr. Middleton, can you answer that question, please? I can. Um, currently, there's no requirement to submit a negative test before arriving on campus. All right. OK, our next question sort of follows a similar theme, and this is talking about a self monitoring act. And the student is asking, is UTA considering or will they provide an app for students, faculty and staff to perform daily self monitoring? Dr. Middleton, could you please answer that? I'm 
feeling popular. Um, <laughs> yeah, so currently we do have a list of self-monitoring questions that are available on the COVID-19 website um, for all uh, employees and students to um, use. Um, and they should be doing that every day before coming coming to campus. We are in the midst of preparing an app that will be a little bit more interactive and easier to use, but will provide the same guidance. Thank you. Okay. So this next question is about the requirement for face covering on campus. If a person on campus is not wearing a covering in either a classroom, a building, or on campus, what is the process to enforce the expectation? Yeah, uh, John, could you answer that question for us, please? <clears throat> yeah, I'd be happy to, Lisa. So we're really seeing this as a, as a shared responsibility. Uh, if we see someone out on campus and they're promoting social distancing, uh, a mask is not required. But if they are in a group uh, out on campus uh, where social distancing is not possible or if they're in any of our buildings, a mask is required. And uh, I would suggest that each of us, if we see anyone without a mask where they should be wearing a mask, is to remind them that they need to be wearing a mask and, uh, and where masks can also be uh, picked up. So we'll have masks available at the uh, information desk in the University Center as well as at the uh, Central Library building. And then we added a third location over at uh, the Commons building on the West Campus. And so if they continually refuse to wear a mask, then uh, you need to escalate that in accordance with the, uh, the plan that's laid out. And for students, eventually it could uh, be referred to our student discipline office for handling there. Thank you. Our next question is related to the move in process for our housing and residence halls. Uh, and a couple of questions around this theme, so I'll summarize. Uh, basically, the question are asking Has the process for move in been modified? And is the number of family members that can assist in the process been adjusted? So I would like to ask Mari Duncan, um, our director for apartment residence life, to answer that question. Hi, Mari. Hi, good evening, everyone. Uh, yes, our move in process has been modified and we are doing uh, four days versus our big one day move in event. We have half hour time slots from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. daily between uh, Saturday the 22nd through Tuesday the 25th. Uh, parents and visitors or helpers, we have limited to two people per student to try and reduce how many people we have here on campus. Thank you. You're welcome. Our next question is related to positive cases identified on campus. How will the campus community be notified of COVID cases on our campus? Yes, so uh, Dr. Middleton, do you want to answer that question? Sure. Um, so currently, if there is a positive case on campus, that's where that contact tracing component comes in. So we will um, identify people that have been um, in close contact with the person that tested positive and we'll notify them directly so that they will quarantine. There are there is a list on the COVID-19 website um, that UTA is maintaining of campus cases. And Jane, if I could add, we also um, feel it's very important to protect the privacy of our students um, and their health information. And so um, where we will be notifying people if they have been in close contact, we may not be able to specifically divulge specific student health information to others. Yes, that's correct. Thank you. Our next question is related to students who drive into campus, so non-residential students uh, that have several campus or classes on campus during the day. Where will they be permitted to hang out uh, between classes uh, while on campus for the day? Yeah, John, could you answer that? Yeah, I'd be happy to, Lisa. So 
uh, there will still be uh, spaces to, to hang out uh, inside many of our buildings that you're accustomed to in the past if you're a returning student. If you're a new student, uh, certainly in the Central Library Building and the University Center, in the Commons, we do have uh, spaces inside a, a lot of our academic buildings. Uh, but as I mentioned earlier, there will be uh, some modifications to those layouts just to promote social distancing. Furniture, for example, will be uh, rearranged to provide the social distancing, but we also have a lot of outdoor spaces. Uh, there's a large uh, deck on the west side of the University Center. We added some uh, a deck and seating uh, by the Central Library. Uh, uh, we've added some over around Hammond Trimble. So across the campus, we've added a lot of, of uh, areas for students to hang out. And of course, Brazos Park, we opened a year ago, and it's a great place for students to hang out. And, uh, and so there's a lot of options available uh, for our students, both inside our facilities as well as outside uh, campus. Thank you. Our next questions are related to residence halls. So let me ask the first one. Has there been a process to de-densify occupants inside of residence halls? Mari, could you answer those questions, please? Yes, uh, at this point, our residence halls are either double occupancy or triple occupancy suites because the restrooms are self-contained and the restrooms in, or sorry, the bath bedrooms in our suites our private bedroom suites, we have not de-densified our current uh, four remaining residence halls. Uh, we have limited, uh, we will be limiting guests and that policy will be announced shortly. And then we will be removing furniture and uh, re reducing occupancy in our common spaces, trying to social distance our students. So at this point, the room density has not been changed. We do not have public restrooms or community bathrooms as some universities have. Uh, we have those private bathrooms with inside the doubles or inside the suites. All right, thank you. Our next question is also related to a portion of the presentation that was given earlier about quarantine and isolation. And the family is asking if a student or to test positive, a residential student test positive, what is the process for isolation in the residence halls? Mari, could you answer that question, please? Yes, I'm coming back. <laughs> uh, so yes, so if a student does test positive, our first uh, ask of the student is if they're able to go to their identified, their pre-identified isolation location, which they identified in their housing addendum. If they don't have a suitable off-campus location, there is an on-campus uh, quarantine and isolation committee will work in conjunction with health services to determine the best location for the student. For some, it might be to stay in place, where others we might need to move them to our Lipscomb Hall, which is our quarantine and isolation facility. We have a team of staff members uh, working on this quarantine isolation uh, process that will be in contact with the student and then also anyone that needs to be quarantine based off of exposure. So we will work hand in hand with the student and walk them through the process and be with them through the process as if they were to go into isolation or quarantine. And in Mari, Lipscomb mm -hmm. Hall this year has been, um, is only going to be used for isolation and quarantine. We would have no other residents living in there. Is that correct? That is correct. Thank you. You're welcome. Our next question is about is, a, is related to classroom usage and a few questions. So summarizing them together, what is the process to disinfect classes, labs and auditoriums after daily use? John Hall, would you mind answering that question? I'd be happy to, uh, Lisa. So at the end of the day, we'll be going in and, and uh, spraying disinfectants throughout uh, those spaces, uh, cleaning those spaces. Uh, we'll also be doing that during the day where there's sufficient breaks uh, between classes or class labs. Uh, there's also, as, as I think was mentioned earlier, there will be cleaning supplies wipes, disinfectants available in the room. Some of the classes are scheduled about 10 minutes apart, so there's not a chance to go in and clean thoroughly, but there are wipes and uh, disinfectants available for students to use 
Uh, we're also spreading out the classes, so a lot of the classes are are online. There's some hybrid. There's some face to face, and so we have about just under 200 classrooms on the campus. And right now, we're scheduled to use about 150 of those rooms. So really uh, spreading out uh, the utilization of the classes to further promote social distancing. Lisa. Thank you, John. OK, our next question is about tuition and fee structure. We had a few of these questions, so let me summarize it. Will the tuition and fee structure be modified for students participating in classes 100% online? Uh, Dr. Perguson, who is our Associate Vice Provost for the Division of Student Success, could you answer that question, please? Yes, uh, Vice President Nagy, I'll be happy to. Thank you. Uh, so for our students that are participating in our fully online classes, and thank you for the question, uh, we of course recognize that this is a, a challenging time for all of us in our Maverick community, and we will continue to strive to find new and innovative ways that we can support our students. Um, you know, as the situation with COVID-19 continues to evolve, the university will continue to evolve to meet our students um, where you are. So our student services and resources that have traditionally been offered via face-to-face -face now include uh, virtual and remote offerings. And so we hope that you all will um, take advantage of looking into those and you can find those resources um, by looking at UTA's main coronavirus webpage. Um, and so since our mandatory fees are used to cover long-term costs, of offering our students these services and resources. Uh, the fees are not calculated on an hourly or daily use structure, but rather we charge all the students the fee, fees and tuition regardless of their choice to use the services or not. So at this time, there will not be a change in the tuition and fee structure. Uh, Lisa? Thank you, Dr. Parkinson. Okay, this question is related to water fountains and water bottle filling stations on campus. I understand that water fountains are closed, but will the attached water bottle filling stations be available for use during the day? Uh, John? Yeah, unfortunately, they're all uh, off of a single valve, and so when we shut the water off to the water fountain, it shuts it off to the bottle fill station as well. So. Uh, will not be able to fill bottles up at the uh, at the water fountain. So please uh, plan to bring uh, plenty of bottled water from the house or uh, it will be available also at different uh, distribution points across the campus in the University Center in the in the grab and go market and other areas across the campus. Thank you. Okay. This question was submitted by the parent of a first year student. It says, my biggest question is what standards need to be met in order for students to no longer be required to wear face masks and go back to in-person learning and a normalcy of campus activities. John, could you answer that question, please? Yeah, I'd be happy to. So as uh, mentioned earlier, we're following uh, orders from the governor's office as well as CDC guidelines. And so as long as those orders are in place, as well as uh, local orders, I think Tarrant County extended their mask order as well. But uh, we are uh, required to adhere and comply with those orders from the state as well as from uh, CDC guidelines. So we'll continue to follow those. And so mask will continue to be required until there's a change in those guidelines or orders. Thank you. OK, Lisa, at this time that empties our queue out so we can move on to the next slide. Well, um, I would just like to thank um, all of our panelists um, tonight and all of my colleagues um, for coming on and answering all the questions um, that our families had today. So thank you so much and thank you for all the hard work that you have put in um, to ensuring that our students can come back to campus as safely as possible. Also, thank you to our families and our students. We are looking forward to having you come back um, in a few short weeks. We know that everybody is having to make their own life choices um, and decisions about what works best for them. 
We hope that you have been able to find the options that you need, whether you want to be 100% online, whether you want to take some hybrid, or whether you want to be back here on campus and take it. So we've tried to provide enough options for our families to make those educated decisions that suit your needs for your family. So we do have another session that will talk about campus life and student life and what, what our community is going to be doing um, when we come back to campus. And that is actually scheduled for this Thursday at six o'clock. Um, so if you're interested about that topic, we welcome you to come back and join us for that. Um, so with that, I will end the evening and thank you guys and have a great night.